And we are back with yet another unboxing. Today we have the Lalo AK917. And I'm really excited about this because this is Lalo's first on-road car and their first 10 scale vehicle as well. Up to this point, they've only been sort of running, uh, you know, small little uh, 16 and 12 scale or 14 and 12 scale uh, little off-road monster trucks and buggies. And you guys have probably seen some of those on my channel. But now we've got an on-road, we've got a 10 scale, and we've got something that is kind of special the way that they've designed this. I think this is more geared to the speed runners. It's not so much a touring car sort of design, but that's not to say that you can't change it around and maybe put a touring car body and go out there and have some fun, which is probably what I'm gonna do, to be honest with you. Uh, I've got a track that's a little bit far away from me, but it should give me some good running footage of this guy sort of getting around and just seeing how it handles overall. Now, uh, very quickly before we kick the box out of the way, just so you guys are aware, there are five versions of this car available, which is a really big deal. I think uh, most people will bring out a car and they'll have a couple of colors and that'll be about it. But Lalo have gone like a few extra steps and they've brought out um, one brushed version and two brushless versions and two rollers. So, and they're available in two colors. So there's the red and there's the martini style looking thing that, I, that you guys saw me unbox before. So uh, there's the uh, alloy chassis, uh, which is available in a brushed version, ready to run. There's the alloy chassis available in a brushless version, ready to run, which is what I got. There's a carbon fiber chassis, uh, brushless, uh, ready to run. And then there are the uh, alloy and carbon fiber rollers. So uh, very, very cool that they've, got all of the, they've actually got all of those available. So there's heaps of choices, heaps, heaps of different price brackets that you can get into and, and sort of play around. There's a bunch of upgrades available, which we'll talk about in a minute as well. Uh, and this particular one is claiming a top speed of about 120 kilometers an hour, which is crazy for a 10 scale, um, you know, out of the box like this. Uh, it does say that you, you, know, you have to upgrade gears and electronic parts. Uh, gears, I've seen that there's some spares that come in this box. So at least they've supplied some of that. I'm hoping that I don't need to buy any of them myself. And as far as the electronic parts, I'm assuming that this is referring to running a 3S instead of a 2S. Because if I have to swap out motors or ESCs, then that's a whole different thing. And this claim, really, I have a problem with that. And you guys know me. I've uh, pulled up a lot of companies in the past to put crazy speed claims as a marketing ploy. You know, a bit of a hook for customers. Oh, look how fast this is. And then you find that you have to buy a whole bunch of stuff to make it, to make it go that quick. And that's not really what the game should be about. So without further ado, Let's get the box out of the way and let's have a look at what you actually get with this guy because there are a number of things here to go through. Uh, of course, as you can see, you get the car fully assembled and ready to go. You get the radio, which was, I think this is the same radio that came with my um, uh, 12 scale buggy, the Lalo 12 scale buggy, which is currently um, in, the, in the sick bay, it needs a repair, uh, but uh, yeah, it's not too bad. It's got 150 meter range. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on, but let's have a look what you actually get in the bag here. So I'll get rid of this. Uh, you get a charger for the included battery. Now this is a really basic charger. If you've got nothing else, sure, you can use something like this. But if you're getting to this level, I almost feel like this shouldn't even be included. Um, they either need to include a proper charger or just don't include one because using this on a, on a big two cell like this, it's gonna take you hours to charge this up. And you can't put them into storage charge or anything like that. It's not really recommended to run these sort of chargers. Um, in here, we've got a little baggie. So this, you've got uh, some Velcro strips. Now these Velcro strips, you can actually use to tape down the body and, uh, and stop the body from sort of flapping at high speeds. I presume that's what they're using them for. There's a pinion in here, and then you've got a couple of spur gears. There's some Allen keys. There's also a little cross wrench in here and some double-sided tape in case you need to relocate ESCs or re-stick it back down or whatever. So they actually give you a fair little bag of goodies. They don't give you any spare parts or anything like that like they've done with the other cars that I had, which I guess, you know, you sort of get used to that and all of a sudden you don't get it. So it's like, it would have been nice if they did give you a couple of little bits, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, I think it's fine. Where I think they've actually done really well though is in the, uh, in the literature here, in the books, because this is actually really, really cool. Um, now, before we get into that, there is one thing I want to show you, and I, I don't know if this is even going to show up. Oh, you can see it. So they gave you this. This is a little protector for the chassis, which I'm definitely going to be sticking on. I'm hoping that's what that's for. Uh, because it's shaped like the actual uh, chassis itself. So I'm definitely gonna be protecting my chassis because uh, once you'll see what's underneath, 
you'll want to protect it as well. Uh, there are some stickers here as well which look really cool so I'll probably use some of these at some point somewhere and then you have uh, this little sort of upgrade chart so this is like their speed challenge bit and uh, in here there's like spare motors you can get, spare spur gears, different motor mounts, um, there's different servos, uh, ESCs, batteries, uh, wing mounts, uh, carbon fiber bits and pieces, little alloy upgrades and things like that that you can get, uh, wheels and tires, different A-arms, I mean there's a list of an array of things and they give you a bit of a clue as to what's coming up as well which is kind of cool. There's a 12 scale little brushless truggy coming up soon and a desert buggy as well hoping maybe I can get my hands on one of those because uh, yeah, going up in size is really, really cool. I can't wait because I mean, it seems like Lalo are getting bigger in their scaling. Uh, who knows, maybe in about two or three years we might see an eight scale come out from them which I think will be really exciting. So that's that booklet there. Um, and then of course we've got the instruction manual and I have to say Lalo have really stepped up their game with the instruction manual. Not only does it look like a magazine cover, I mean this thing looks amazing, uh, but inside they've really stepped up their game. It's fully color illustrated, quality print, uh, really really nice, all the uh, literature, specs, so this is the specs of all the different versions of cars, the width, the height, the length, the weight, the this and that, the other, everything's in there. And then you got full um, top-down view illustration of what everything is uh, from the carbon fiber version, which is this guy here, to the one that I got, which is this one. And then this one is the uh, brushed version. Uh, very well illustrated, exploded views, very deeply printed, like dark print. Very, very nice, like the print quality in this manual is above and beyond anything that I've seen uh, from a lot of other companies out there. So all the part numbers, all the different pictures, everything's been beautifully illustrated. Uh, just really, really quality stuff. I know a lot of people don't talk about manuals too much. These end up in the bottom of a drawer somewhere or you end up losing them. But honestly, hang on to this one because this is a quality, quality print. I'm really happy with uh, you know how they've packaged this whole, this whole thing up. Okay, so very quickly, we're gonna cover off the radio. So this runs on four double A's. It's got a 150 meter range, which is okay for general running, but if you're gonna do like full on speed runs, you probably want something a little bit more reliable than this uh, with a much longer range. So just be, bear that in mind. Um, it feels quite comfortable in the hand. You know, it's got the carbon fiber sort of look to it, which isn't too bad. It's got the uh, slightly turned or angled wheel, so it's nice and comfortable in the hand. It is a four channel radio, so it does have two additional channels up here, but they're actually not connected to anything. They're not doing anything. I did try it out and press them. They do beep uh, when you sort of press on the receiver, but it doesn't do anything. It doesn't turn the lights on and off or do anything fancy like that. Underneath here, and we'll quickly peel this away because I know some people probably like to, uh, to see that. Uh, peel that away and uh, underneath this cover, you've got your uh, steering trim and steering jewel rate over on this side, throttle trim and throttle, uh, throttle jewel rate over here. This I actually thought were like uh, dip switches for changing frequencies or something like that in the previous video. But these are actually your reverse switches for all your channels. So if you've got a channel that's going the wrong way, you flip that and it reverses the channel, essentially that's all it is. And then you've got your on and off uh, button just here, which is actually uh, pretty nice. Now, I've put four double A's in here. You will need to get those yourself, as you saw in the unboxing. There are no batteries included with this radio or with the car. Uh, but in a nutshell, that's the radio right there. So finally, here we are for the car itself and what a beautiful machine this is. I really like the color scheme on this. I have to say, uh, it looks very, very good. I think Lalo did a fantastic job. Um, here's the top side there. Uh, very, very nice. They got LED lights hooked up on the back, a little fake, fake exhaust back here. A usable spare tire as well. Uh, now I did see um, Razor RC had uh, the carbon fiber version and he had rotors and calipers in the wheels. This one doesn't come with those, which I'm not really fast on. I'm not, a, you know, they're just a cosmetic thing. So just something to note um, that these don't come with it. Uh, of course, you've got LEDs on the front as well. You've got the little uh, body clip tethers, which I really like them so you don't lose your body pins. And just the overall look of the car actually doesn't look too bad. It does look a bit retro. It's not super modern. Um, and I 
certainly don't have a problem with that. You know, it has these little spoilers on the back here as well in case you miss those. Uh, they're kind of attached back here, which aren't too bad. And then underneath, um, I've actually got it upside down there. <laughs> underneath, you've got uh, the etched uh, aluminum chassis and uh, something that Lalo did with a lot of the creators is they actually put their name on the chassis. I think on the carbon fiber version, they actually engraved it in. Um, on these ones, they got printed on, which is why I'm gonna be using that chassis protector to make sure that I don't scratch that name off because this is a one of one. This is, um, yeah, it's a very unique thing. I'm very honored to have my name on a car. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool thing that Lalo did and uh, yeah, I certainly didn't ask for it. And it was a good surprise when uh, they said, you know, look on the bottom of the car, there's something there for you. And uh, sure enough, when I turned it over, I saw that I was just, I was blown off my feet. I was, uh, yeah, it was a really cool thing to do. Uh, now, when you take the body off, you gotta remember that this is actually tethered to the receiver uh, for your LED. So we'll uh, unplug that. And then you can see how the LED is all sort of wired up in there. Um, there's nothing on the back other than just, you know, the, the tethers, but this is actually not just stuck on. They're actually bolted in. You can see they got a little screw back here and uh, another one on top. So these lights are actually uh, very nicely tucked in there uh, where I've seen some other cars when they come with LED uh, light buckets like that. They're just double-sided stuck on. So uh, to have them like that, I think that's brilliant. That's a really good thing. So good on Lalo for doing that. The body itself is not too bad. It's actually pretty thick for a on-road body. I think. Uh, most people, when they get them, they're gonna see, geez, you know, this, this should probably be an off-road body, but uh, it's, it's really good, it's quite thick. So hopefully that will hold up pretty well, especially when I uh, crash this thing at high speed. So now let's look at the car itself. Here it is here in all its fantastic glory. This one here with the alloy uh, does feel quite heavy. This is a, a heavy bit of kit. Um, they, uh, they got this big old brace going across here, which is really interesting. This is, I believe it's just plastic uh, that's got this carbon fiber look though. It's not a carbon fiber brace. Uh, you've got a nice big foam bumper on the front here. You've got adjustable body posts on the front. You have your oil filled shocks. The A-arms upper and lower are really interesting design. It looks like they're just gonna be adjustable via those little holes there, which is kind of cool. You've got multiple adjustments on the shock towers up here, so you can adjust those there. Um, They've also got multiple adjustments on the lower A-arms just there as well. So that's what they look like. Uh, wheels and tires, not too bad. Uh, quite soft actually. So uh, suspension wise, you know, it's a little stiff, but hopefully for an on-road car, it shouldn't be too bad. But the tires, yeah, they, they, the foams feel quite soft. The tire wall itself feels very firm. So it looks like they might actually concave in the center, which I'm a little bit worried about. I would have preferred some firmer foams on this. You do have uh, rear sway bars installed here. You might be able to see those, if I can flip it there. So there it is there. And I'm trying to see, yes, they have front sway bars in there as well. So you can see the sway bar mount just there. Adjustable steering links on either side. You got an adjustable servo saver just there. So you can tighten that up as well. Uh, your steering servo is over on this side with again, an adjustable link going across. Uh, your receiver sits on top. Uh, some semi-tidy wire management going on here. A really long antenna that's kind of sticking up here and just tied to the actual brace. So they don't have a spot for you to actually have the antenna sticking out or anything like that. Uh, so if you wanna do that, you might need to uh, kind of fabricate to get the antenna sticking out of the body if that's what you want to do for some extra range. Your on and off switch is over here. That's just a push button. That's a big plus for me. I love the push button, uh, little uh, on and off switches. XT60 connectors instead of Dean's, another big plus uh, for, for Lalo there. The ESC slightly coming off the chassis, so it's a good thing they gave me some extra tape because this one looks like it's coming off a little bit. It's got a nice big fan on there. The fan actually spools up um, and it's got an automatic off. So if you turn this on and just leave it on for a few minutes, it will autom automatically shut down if you haven't really touched the car at all. Uh, and I found this out uh, just by pure accident when I first got the car and I wanted to um, just take some photos for socials. I had turned the car on, 
had the lights on and took some photos and things like that and I was just flicking through the photos and all this and then a couple of minutes later the car just shut down and I've gone wow all right so it's got an automatic off and sure enough I saw it in the manual and it actually uh, says that it has a, an automatic shutdown so very very cool um, the rear shock tower has more adjustment points for your shocks uh, you got your spare wheel and tire back here you can see your LEDs and how all that works uh, and you've got this support back here which is for the body uh, so that the body doesn't just flex over and, and bend over at high speeds. Uh, note that the hinge pin braces are actually alloy so you can see front and rear alloy braces on the rear arms and front and rear alloy um, hinge pin braces on the front arms as well. Uh, battery is a 2S hard case uh, 3300 milliamp this is a I think it was a 35c uh, that's not too bad I mean you know it's a hard case it's a looks like a decent battery comes with XT60 connectors um, that's not a bad thing at all uh, underneath the battery you'll see it's got some foam padding in there as well so you can probably remove that foam padding for actually no you can't because this this lip here actually sticks up I was gonna say you can remove it for the taller batteries but that's not the case to put a 3S in here, you're going to need to go with a soft case because there is no adjustment in height uh, for the um, for a you know a taller battery. Um, I think I saw somewhere that there was some Velcro straps. I think the, the carbon fiber version came with Velcro straps uh, that you could swap out, but that's not the case with this one. There were no Velcro straps included. Um, so if you're going to run a hard case, you're going to have to get rid of this altogether. Maybe Velcro it down or find another way to, uh, to do it. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to stick to a soft case in here in order to fit in this, uh, in this chassis. You got an alloy center drive shaft going through there as well. The motor is a 3650, 4300 kV motor. So, uh, and there is plenty of room here for some larger motors. So the ESC at the moment is long ways. You can always flip that uh, sideways and get you know allow you for some extra length you can always put the ESC on top of this brace as well and that'll give you even more length um, you know you can probably put the ESC off to the side or something like that so there are there, there is room in here for you to modify this and customize it if you want to run bigger motors uh, shouldn't be an issue with that at all adjustable body post in the rear as well so yeah in a nutshell that is the Lalo AK917 and uh, now we can move on to the next phase of this unboxing. So I'm going to keep this really short and simple because I've only got a couple of things to get through here. The first one and I guess the most important one is the radio itself. Uh, it only has 150 meter range and when you've got a car that does over 65 plus miles an hour or at least has the capability to do that you don't want a radio that has such a short range. I think for general bashing, if you're just in the car park somewhere, especially with some, some of their off-road smaller cars, sure, this will work just fine. In most cases, you're not gonna be 150 meters away, uh, but when you're doing something like this where potentially a lot of people are gonna be going down to a deserted road and try to do some re speed runs and test that 65 plus mile an hour, uh, you want something that's gonna be a little bit more reliable. So either they come up with something like that for the radio or maybe offer these cars as an almost ready to run. Just take the radio out of the equation completely and uh, let people supply their own and uh, you know the cars will come down in price uh, Lalo has one less thing to worry about and uh, we can install our own radios and, and be happy that way uh, the second thing is uh, the battery compartment specifically to this model uh, I know that the carbon fiber may have come with some battery straps which is great uh, you know velcro battery straps this one here doesn't give me the option to install a 3s hard case um, I think at the very least, they should include some spaces for the tray just so you could raise it up a little bit or something like that. Or maybe just do away with that, you know, folding strap thing and, uh, you know, give us something that allows me to put a 3S hard case in there because as it is at the moment, it's, it's just not going to fit. Um, I have to, you know, try and find a, a 3S soft case. So they're really the only two criticisms I have on this car so far. We'll see if anything else comes up. Uh, as I run it, but that's that's pretty much it for now.
And there we go, that wraps up yet another unboxing here on the channel. If you like what you saw and you wanna see more, be sure to hit that like button before you go. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new and uh, check out the video description down below. I'll have links in there to my social media where you can keep a little uh, bit ahead of what goes on here on the channel. I'll also have links in there to the Lalo website where you can uh, find out a little bit more information about this guy and also the other versions that are available if they interest you. And of course, you can get a bit of a discount at the moment with the pre-orders for this particular model. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you all very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and I'll be speaking to you all in the next upload. is um, only comes available in the alloy chassis. So, whew. this is great for just general, general bashing. I think some of their other cars could definitely benefit, for, benefit from some. Blah, 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 blah. And there we go, that wraps up yet another unboxing here on the channel. If you like what you, there. Uh, and you've got the radio. The radio is actually the same one that I got with, and I'm gonna sneeze. Jesus, that was brutal.